In this video, we're going to discuss how to build a home lab to run virtual machines, either on VMware ESXi, Microsoft Hyper-V, or any other hypervisor of your preferences. In this case, I have picked the HP Z440 for multiple reasons. This is because the case is the perfect size, it has plenty of room for DIMMs, it has a strong power supply, and it supports Intel Xeon processors up to the fourth generation. So you can easily run a 22-core processor in this system, but they're a little expensive going at around $200. So I picked a medium processor, the E52686V4. They are around $65 and have 18 cores, which is more than enough for the task. Okay, here's the back of the system. It has plenty of USB ports and PS2 ports that no one really cares for at this time. As for the video card, we chose a basic one because we don't need a high-end GPU for a virtualization host. But if you want, this unit's power supply enables you to put in a high-end graphics card that you can pass through to your virtual machine. We will not be doing this just because we're only going for a basic, very cheap home lab system with 18 cores and 64 gigs of RAM. Okay, here's the inside view of the system. As you can see, there are plenty of PCI slots. There's our video card. Here's the heatsink. And as you can see, it's very big and easily capable of cooling the processor we chose. You can also see that there's eight DIMMs that can be populated by up to 64 gig sticks each. So, you can have a ton of memory in this, but we will not be doing that in this video. We're going to try to keep this build very cheap, so we're going to install multiple 8 gig sticks for a total of 64 gigs. And by the way, each stick is around $10. So the RAM totals out to $80, and the CPU is also extremely cheap. This means that you can build a nice system for under three to $400. I'm also going to show you the HP NVMe card that we can use. Next, I'm going to show you the parts that we're going to be using. This is the memory that we're going to use. It's ECC registered memory, and this is the heating core CPU that we're going to use, the E52684. This is the Turbo Z card that we are using. You don't have to, but it makes it a lot easier. You can put one NVMe drive into this card, and it's specifically from HP, so it's supported. You can use that, or you can just use a regular SSD you should be able to run at least eight VMs on this system. Nothing special, but it would be great as a home lab just to start learning VMware ESXi. You can also learn VMware Workstation or Microsoft Hyper-V. Whatever you choose, this is a great learning experience, and you can build the whole thing for under $400. If you're near the New York Long Island area, you can reach out to us and you can purchase the system for very cheap as well. We installed the new CPU and put enough ceramic U-thermal compound on the processor. Once the heatsink is pressed and screwed in, it will spread evenly. The heatsink in this system is really good, and it's not cheap. It has enough copper to keep the processor cold, and keep in mind, update the BIOS before you put a new CPU inside the system, because it supports Generation 3 and 4. So if you have an older BIOS and you install a newer CPU, it will not boot at all. Okay, so all the parts are installed. The system is up and running now. I didn't install the Turbo Z drive because that's going to significantly bring the cost up. So right now, I only have the 256 gig SSD installed and a two terabyte hard drive. This system can easily run a few VMs and if you need more speed, you can install a Turbo Z drive with one or two terabytes of NVMe storage. But to keep the cost down, this is the build. Also, I did not install the memory cooler with fans and you'll see that in a second. Basically, you don't necessarily need it, but the device will complain every time on boot about it. We installed the additional fan to cool down the memory. It seems like you need the fan whenever you go above 32 gigs of memory. The computer will only complain about it. This is not a necessity unless you are getting annoyed by the boot up message. In that case, you will definitely need this fan, but the computer will function perfectly without it. Overall, this is a very cheap system that can run a ton of VMs and you can get into computer virtualization or you can use it to run many network utilities to get your CCNA or any other certification. So for a couple hundred dollars, you can have your virtual lab just in one cheap PC. I'm on. Built an empire of stars.